Hello, I'm Bill Toomey and here today we're in Killinardish, County Cork, some two miles from McCroom, at the house and stables of well-known horse trainer Fergie Sutherland. Now Fergie, of course, is the man who achieved the highest honour in national hunt racing when in 1996 the horse which he trained in Imperial Call won the coveted Cheltenham Gold Cup. He's brought great honour and glory to Killinardish and we've come here this evening to ask him a little about his background, why he came here to Ireland in the first place and, of course, to let us have uh, a view of the day itself, the big day in Cheltenham. The Horse Imperial Call, a gelding by the stallion Callanish, uh, brought along as a novice horse by Fergie to win, as I say, the biggest race that a trainer can win. Now Fergie Sutherland is a big man in stature, but he's a quiet man by nature. He lets his horses do the talking. If you were to ask me, I'd say he doesn't suffer fools gladly. But we want to ask him, Fergie, first of all, kill an Irish county Cork. What actually brought you here, Fergie, in the first place? Uh, well, my people were living here, and I used to come over here on leave from the army and uh, on holidays from training in Newmarket when I started that. And uh, <coughs> I, I always did a lot of hunting. I used to hunt five and six days a week by right. choice. And um, I was always riding horses about the place, and I thought, what a masterpiece of a place this is to train young horses, right. to make young horses for any job, right. whether it was national hunt racing or hunting or whatever. A strong link always, Fergie, between hunting in Ireland and race horses. You know, traditionally always a strong, very strong link between them. Oh my word, yeah. it's the basic thing. Yes. The basic thing. It's the same people who understand horses who know how to make horses and ride horses and understand how to get them going that can make these horses. Otherwise, you, the, the, the training profession, you know, they're in such a hurry, you're just going to muck them up, these nice national animal horses. Right. So you progressed, you came, you come here to Killinardish, uh, you, your, your love of hunting brings you here, and then you progress it and you a course training in England prior to coming here in, in Newmarket in, in your earlier years and uh, your commission in the army. But you then move on to the point-to-point -point field. I know you're great love of point-to-point -point and great success. Horses I remember such as Ty Rooney and uh, Paul and Agid, um, all these okay. horses, Four Kings of course. Yeah, yeah. And maybe just to let us have some reminiscences about those great days. Still great days of course, you're still point-to-pointing. My word, yeah, they're, they're, they, were the, they were the best days of the lot. I, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't swap that for anything. We had we had th three winners one afternoon at yes. Lismore. Tom Bastide rode the three. Great, great effort. For Ty Rooney was one, Mother Clash was the other. That's and right. And Four Kings was the third. I right. think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Palinagi, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah, it's yes, yeah. Yeah, and then we went to, um, then we went to Bartlemy with um, Palinagi and Four Kings, and they won again. And Nicky he read the pair. Yeah. And I always said, Well, that's it, I, I I've had enough now. I I've 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 done what I wanted to do. I see. And, uh, and the, the the pair of them got sold. <laughs> uh, speaking uh, of point of pointing, uh, Fergie, why is it so popular here now? Especially uh, in the well, south of Ireland. Well, people identify with the riders and, and uh, it, it's a sport that it's it, not expensive and uh, it's just a, it's, a, it's it's all for sport and it suits the Irish temperament and when the horse wins it's worth something and it can get sold I see. and it suits Literally. the Irish temperament Indeed. I think it's a super afternoon the um, an ideal place to train a horse obviously and you use the point to point absolutely point as a constructional as a constructional uh, race is a constructional aid to the formation of m making young national hunt horses. It is the only way. They only learn bad habits in hurdle races and they get nothing but abuse in bumper races. And point to points are the only way to introduce proper national hunt bred horses. To, to the to their what is to be their job. I see. Fergie, the 
the horses yours, the horses that you trade, and there's been many more horses here uh, as well as Imperial Call. The type of horse that you actually look for is there a, a typical type of horse you look for? Uh, I like an <coughs> I like an active horse uh, that uses its hocks well. I, I, I like a horse that's active behind, yeah. and uh, I've always liked a horse with a big old head on it. Yes. <laughs> does that mean he, does that mean he has to have a good brain, is it? A good brain box. A good brain yeah, box. Yeah, I like a good brain box. Indeed. Now, yeah. obviously, and we don't... We, we the, that, that type, I often find when I was riding them myself, that they look after me. <laughs> uh, obviously, we don't want to get too many trade secrets from you, but uh, a typical day at the yard, perhaps, if you could just take us through it. Well, John Barry comes in to feed him at 7 o'clock in the morning, and uh, <coughs> Dinny and the girls come in at 8 o'clock, and we start <coughs> doing them out and riding them, and uh, I like to get my horses out for <coughs> most of two hours every day. Otherwise, I don't think you're, you're doing the job okay. at all. There's a variety, obviously, of, of the method. In, in other words, the routine will change. Obviously, you will take them on one gallop, maybe give them a walk in the glen, a pop over a pole. Well, quite honestly, <coughs> I believe in rather a boring routine. Interesting, yes. We, 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 in, uh, from December, from <coughs> November until... 1st of November until the 1st of March, I take them to Ahbala Point to Point course where Jack Morris Murphy lets me in. Yeah. And I give them three counters up there every day. Three six furlong counters. And um, they gradually get fit doing that. I have a gallop here at my own place, uh, but it wouldn't stand uh, too many horses going up it the whole time. It, it would yeah, just churn it up too much. Uh, so we prefer to go to our bullock. And we have the the river there. There's a marvellous river. And we go and stand in that for their uh, hydrotherapy session. Very good. Uh, Fergie Sutherland has always struck me as a man who is very much at peace with himself. And this is just a, a <coughs> impression that I've got looking at him over the years. Uh, Certainly when he, walks, <coughs> when he walks into a room, you certainly know he's there. Uh, he has his trademark when he goes to the races of his very distinctive staff, which he holds. Um, but when I say at peace with yourself, Fergie, is this transmitted, do you think, into your horse? Well, I say it's quiet men that make quiet horses. And if you've got the horse in a fuss, you're going to win nothing. Thank you. Yes, a good point. Um, so we've got the typical day at the yard. Um, the the big day, of course, and the big event was the Gold Cup, Fergie. Now, perhaps Imperial Call, could we ask you, where did this horse come from? I bought it from Tom Costler, the three-year-old. Yeah, Tom Costler, of course, a very famous uh, producer yeah, of horses yeah. in County Clare. He's a genius. Genius. Yes. Uh, he sold me nearly all my horses. I see. He sold me Temper. Uh, as a two-year-old, he wasn't too expensive. He sold me Imperial Corps as a three-year-old uh, when he <coughs> just, he was just nicely broken, uh, but he hadn't done any work with him really. But he had him jumping very well and he was riding well. And uh, so it goes on, I mean, I uh, and I bought um, Martin and Pavo off him and I um, bought nearly all my horses. I see. So you, 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 you have your source. There's no reason to change it, obviously. No. Uh, back to the horse. So you, you purchase him as a three-year-old. You bring him back here to McCroom. And then do you see at the very early stages the special quality in this horse? Um, does he suddenly jump no, over the stable's door <laughs> and tell nah. you he's going to win a gold cup? No. No, no what we do is we do, them, we do their teeth. We give them a dose of physic. We walk them round the roads for about three months, and then we let them start telling us. Okay. Hmm? So the campaign then, uh, as a novice, then he goes and wins his first race in uh, Limerick, was it? Yeah. So well, he, no, he, it was his second race. 
Trevor Hogan rode him first time out in a winner's the one in thirders. Yes. But he, um, <coughs> he, he wasn't really expected to shine that day because I thought the course would be a bit too sharp for him. Right. And the, um, there were several winners in the race. I thought it might be a bit sharp for him too. He wasn't really expected to shine, but he ran nicely and gave us every expectation that he'd do better the next time. going to be promising. Now, the second season, you would feel, was a very important one in the horse's formation. Oh, yeah, the well, then he, he, he ran... Um, <coughs> he, he, he won two handicap hurdles and then he won a conditions hurdle at, at uh, Leopardstown when he beat, um, he finished up beating um, Idiot's Venture 15 lengths at level weights, I think, uh, Leopardstown. And <coughs> then I, I said, right, that it, it's time to stop this um, hurdle racing yeah. lark. No, okay. we'll, we'll, we'll go chasing now. Okay, so uh, you finish up then on his second season, and now we're into his third season. Uh, he picks up a race I know in November. That's right. Yeah, he goes yeah. to he goes to Leopardstown, uh, Punchestown, Punchestown, and he beats Mubadir, who I think won the Galway Plate. And right. he, he he beats him as a novice uh, first time out. Okay, so there's some good horses in here. Son Man I know was was involved along the way too, wasn't he? Yeah, uh, yeah. But he finished These third to Son Man at. at at Roscommon. Okay, but these were tough first race two-mile horses now, weren't they? Yeah, but well, this was both their first yeah. race and yeah. uh, some man hit, hit a few of the fences, but right. he was very fit and he kept going and my fellow <coughs> wasn't really Probably expected won. to shine on the, the ground that, that was uh, uh, there the, that day. The ground was a bit, bit lively at right. Roscommon, so we weren't, um, you know, killing him. But anyway, he did nicely at Punchestown. He did nicely at Punchestown. No, no, you go to, you go and to then he goes to Limerick, Limerick at yes, Christmas. Limerick, yes. And he wins the Murphy Stout. Yeah. He beats Mona Lee River. And he's beginning to establish himself uh, now as one of the top novices. And then he goes to Nace and he wins the Nace Nari Chase beating... Um, Okay, so we, we come then to this time at, at Christmas in Leopardstown, where the meeting is off, you recall. They, they were oh, yeah, then we come to the next year. The, the next year, yeah. Yeah, that's the Ericsson, yeah. Yeah, he, he starts off, he, he does nicely. For a start, he wins the Morris Oil at um, Clonmel, and uh, he picks him up and carries him, you know. Uh, can't remember what he beats, but um, they were good, <coughs> top-class handicappers, and he makes them look ordinary. And um, the ground was only just safe for him to run on it, no better than good. Jerry O'Neill ran and said, by God, you know, it, it's just all right. But uh, then he had the right, so he would, you know. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> so... Yeah, Jerry continues his association with the horse. There's a there's a disappointment when he falls. So then the next yeah. race is at Punchestown, yes. when he falls at the first fence, and the, there's a very low sun, and I'm making an excuse in my mind mm. that the low sun uh, dazzled him. Uh, <clears throat> but then I, I I I decided that it was time to get uh, a, a a different rider. I thought he wanted. <coughs> uh, different rider. Jerry was a very good rider, but he wasn't getting enough practice at the time. He got practically no rides apart from the ones that I was giving him, and uh, I just decided it was time for a change. I see, yes. So then you were moving to um, Christmas, then the Ericsson was, was the next player. So then we, we come up to the Ericsson at Christmas, and um, that didn't happen. The Frost won that. We were up there for a week, I think twice. Uh, we certainly went up twice, and it was it was off the the frost one, the Ericsson that year. And um, 
So then the next available race was a two and a quarter mile handicap chase, the McCain chase. Which would be a little shorter. Which, which uh, the McCain's very, yeah, it was short, yeah. very kindly agreed to restage at the next Leopardstown meeting. The Ericsson's uh, wouldn't buy it again, you know? Yes, because they there wouldn't there was no, television, yeah. no television or something. <laughs> They weren't thinking about the, the lads in the, in the disadvantaged area. Right. And and um, so we had to go for the McCain. And we were getting 12 pounds from Strong Platinum, who was a crack, crack two mile horse, yeah, yeah. trained by Christy so Roach yeah. and ridden by Conor Edouard. And um, <coughs> we beat him, uh, but I don't, First of all, I think the ground favoured our horse, who loves a soft and strong platinum doesn't. Mm -hmm. And I don't think strong platinum was too busy that day anyway. I don't think he was off. And um, so we, 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 we got through. Okay. So obviously then we're, now the, the momentum is gathering with this horse. And we've got a serious contender for Cheltenham. But there's going to be a test. And it's going to be the ultimate test to see whether he's good enough or not to go. So we come to the Hennessy then. Yeah. So then we go for the, the Hennessy and and um, in Leperson. Denny and I thought he was very well. We had him in good fettle. We had we hadn't done anything special with him. We'd just been cantering away at half a leg every day. As yeah. We always do with all of them. Right. And uh, he trotted up. He beat he, trots up. he beat Master Oates, and he'd won the. Go cup the year before, so the writing was on the wall then, wasn't it? Okay, so you're a jockey that day? Connor rode him that day. So this is the first time Connor rode him? Was, yeah, Con 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 Connor, Connor came, into the, came into, the, into the story then because. Yeah. Did Connor uh, seek the ride? Or did no, you no, I him asked him to ride the horse. Right. Because um, Charlie was claimed, uh, I think he, presume he was claimed or perhaps he chose, to ride uh, Life of the Lord for uh, Edna Brown, Brown yes. who, who um, didn't run very well. So now we, we have, in effect, the plan well in motion. We're, what, from Cheltenham, maybe five weeks, and we're getting closer to the day. As you move toward the day, Fergie, how confident is the camp here? Well, I, we were getting more and more confident by the day, weren't we, Denny? Yeah. You know, we were very happy with the horse. Yeah. I mean, he and I trained his horse. Yes. We, we look, he looks after him and we discuss him every day. I see. About the every step he takes. Incidentally, he's referring to Denny Daly, who's just standing, yeah. you know, sitting here behind he's us. Ma he's, he's and made um, Denny has played a very integral role in the training of this horse, Fergie is, is making some nice compliments there to Denny. I'm and not, I'm not, I'm and no It isn't a car, I'm just I mean, making he's stating fact. an absolute he's stating statement. Fact. I yeah. mean, I, yeah. I don't know how the bloody horse is unless he tells me he's riding him. Yeah. But so he, he, he knows that I understand what he says. So it's a team so effort. Absolutely. It's a team effort. So you head for Cheltenham, uh, and I just want to bring it to up to the final day here where we have You've gone there quite a few days before the races. There's yeah. a reason for this. The, the Cheltenham Gold Cup, incidentally, has run traditionally yeah. on a Thursday <coughs> of the That's middle right, week in March. Yeah. But the horse is taken there on the previous Saturday, perhaps. I think we went over the previous Saturday. I Thursday know. even. <laughs> well, we didn't hear it. Well, we didn't, yeah, well, first, of all, first of all, it's a long way from here to... To, to the Cotswolds. It's a hell of a long way from here to Ross Lair. Alone. For Jesus' sake. <laughs> We didn't know. I mean, we didn't want. If, what if the lorry broke? Yes, down? good point. And uh, what if the, yeah. if you were held up in the in the in the in the siege and you know yeah. for yeah. rough yeah. siege? Yeah. yeah, it makes sense. I mean, this is this. And the, this and the other thing was, the, the the horse had rather sore heels at the back of his heels. You know how they got these yeah. sore heels. I do indeed. And, and I thought his heels could do with a couple of days rest. You know. Right. Uh, I thought if the heels healed up, he, he, he could find someone nice to canter over there, and he'd be grand. <laughs> <laughs> so now, uh, any plans? Anyway, did he want to go in good time? Did he want to? Did he want a few days <laughs> to, uh, to see how the other half lived? Oh, uh, exactly. Yeah. Now, 
I would. But it was have, a good idea. It was a good idea. I, I have the impression that this was done uh, with precision, Fergie, in terms of, yes, you have the art, and now it's winning the race is going to be the final piece oh, in that We were determined, we were determined, we determined to win. We weren't going to leave yeah. now, some piece of the jigsaw so lying on the fucking head. floor. <laughs> 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 so we the jigsaw was the taken, jigsaw. the full jigsaw was taken. <laughs> now, things like water, feed, uh, your staff, this was oh, yeah. all had to be looked after. Would you have taken a water supply? Well, feed? we didn't that year because we hadn't got a very good water supply, but we did have a bit of a, we did have a little bit of a fright about the feed. Yeah. Because we'd won the, we'd won the, the Red Mills Trials Chase the week before we went with the uh, Listerland Prince. And um, to my horror and dismay, the um, result of the test, the routine depth test, came back positive. And uh, we'd been feeding the horse caffeine and uh, some of caffeine and yeah, some of the right. they have in the nuts, uh, unbeknownst to me. And um, so I was able to establish that it, it came from the um, nuts that we were giving him. And uh, we got, so that was a bit of a fright. They were trying to get me to change the nuts. But it was being a stubborn bastard, I wouldn't. You know? I said, no. I went to the nut people and I said, listen, you get stripped to the waist, boys, and get into that. Maybe. How to uh, see what you're putting in these bloody yeah. nuts, yeah. and and make sure that we get some good ones, and then I'll stick with you. I see. And, and uh, everything worked out. That's it worked um, out. We won the Gold Cup, and they finished up. They sponsored my Lorena. Very good. <laughs> uh, I know that it was a vintage Gold Cup in terms of the runners, and of course there was a big uh, English following and for their horse one man, uh, who subsequently proved to be disappointing uh, in his Gold Cup runs. However, mm. prior to that, prior to his running in the Gold Cup, he had won the King George. He was the great white hope for England. He was supposed to be the natural successor to Desert Orchid. When you arrived in Cheltenham, were you pleased that maybe the focus was on the grey horse and maybe a little off yourself? Were you left alone in Cheltenham? Were the media <coughs> intrusive? No, they were very good trips, yeah. weren't they? They were very yeah. nice trips. I find yeah. Cheltenham myself excellent having been there with horses, and, and yeah, I, fi yeah. I find that they do let you and keep oh, the no, distance. They were, you know? they were yeah. very, we couldn't have had a better reception. Uh, Major Arkwright uh, looked after us like royalty, and yeah. everything was done for us. Yeah. You know? yeah. So the build, up, the build up, I know that you use the um, centre of the course, did he? And that's where yeah, you, yeah. you walk your horses. Then he was hacking yeah. around there every morning, yeah. miles yeah. and miles. Yeah. But it, it, it's, it's a wonderful sight because I've gone up there in the mornings and, and about half or seven they start, maybe a little earlier. You can get onto the course, the public are let watch the gallops at a distance and you can see the horses and it's, it's a magnificent build up to the event itself. Yeah. Uh, do you want to take us to the race itself? Not really. Not no. really, no. Well, I, I mean, it, it, I just tell kind of um, just consider your you're riding a very good uh, novice horse. I said, I think you've got a stone in hand. I, I knew we'd beat the grey horse because I knew we had more stamina. Yes. So uh, the, so the but, uh, but uh, I said, I mean, the important thing is to jump every fence properly. So I said, walk round the course, please, by yourself, and cut the fence in two, and then cut the outside half in two and go in the middle of the outside half and go and pick your fence place in every fence and then do the same on the horse and jump it and lay up with the pace third not further back and second third or fourth the whole way around I see. and you'll win i said you've got a stone in hand don't worry about playing Racehorses and getting involved in okay. races. Fergie, Conor Odomara is so he, a superb horseman. Oh, yeah. How important is the jockey in the final equation? 
<laughs> well, it, it, it is. It, it's half, isn't it? Is it? Right. And on a percentage, on a percentage basis, you're giving him 50%. I don't know. I, 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 I know. Well, you're, 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 yeah. you're, you're the percentage. You're the percentage. <laughs> I'm the percentage man. I, 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 I do I know. Wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't have a bad rider. No, no. I do know I that over the years, it would be at point to pointing. I'll be at I wouldn't have a bad yeah. rider. I, 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 like I, I, I said that you wouldn't tolerate I a bad rider. I have a very good rider. But I, I have a greatest admiration for Conrad Dwyer and his riding of the race. It's super rider. Right? So the horse wins the race. And it's something that reminds me of when you're asked. Uh, during your later life, where you were for a very famous incident. I remember somebody saying, I always remember where I was uh, when uh, Armstrong landed on the moon. I always remember I, where I was when President Kennedy died. I think there are thousands and thousands of Irish people who will always remember where they were when Imperial Call won the Gold Cup. I know myself, I wasn't in Chatham that year, but I was in Carrigaline where there's a huge following for national hunt racing. And the public house that I was in, who were plenty of the lads are very friendly with Fergie. And this place just went absolutely wild. In roses. In roses. Ah, right? Jesus. And, <laughs> and the corner house in Carrigaline as well. I've so, been there for so, two years. Uh, <laughs> in addition, Fergie, when you saw the horse coming over the last, I know that there was a, a very nice uh, film clipping of Fergie shown in the stands, very quietly, because that's his nature just gently urging the horse on, but not in any obtrusive way or ostentatious way, other than the face of a man who had come to do a job in a professional way and did it. Sorry. But could you tell me, Fergie, in the aftermath of the race, quietly satisfied, I know, because that's the type of man you are, your memories of just the immediate aftermath of the race? Uh, highly chuffed, and, and I was <laughs> Sort of delighted for for Denny and and Billy the team, and Connor and, and the team. everybody and, yeah. uh, and the team. Yeah. So then, the presentation we remember, the uh, the press, the media, the newspapers, the television, the interviews, uh, the glory that was brought back here to McCroom and Kilinardish, uh, fathers telling their sons, and we'll never ever forget this event. Fergie, when you came back here to Ireland, when did the horse actually come back and yourself? <coughs> we, we, we got back the same night, didn't we? Okay, so you travelled back on the Thursday, the yeah, horse, yeah. did he, horse travel, Bill travelled yeah, we, we, we came back the same night, yeah. the day after, you know. I see it. Yeah. So then a lot of... Uh, we came back on the same boat. Back, you know? I see it. So it's a lot of celebrations back and forth. Uh, the no, we went to bed that. We, we went to bed. Yeah. Okay. So that brings so us. everybody else is going. Um, I was shagged. Out, yeah. That brings us to the end of this interview uh, of a man who came to Ireland some many years ago, found a spot here in Kilnardish that he loves. He's an Englishman by birth, but he's very much an Irishman by spirit. Uh, I want to thank Fergie, uh, his charming wife Anne, Diddy, and the lads here for inviting us into his room and into his home and giving us an insight into his big day and as I say it and as Fergie says it himself it wasn't just himself it was a team effort and the team went out the team won and good evening well done well done Billy yeah. you're yeah. around yeah. and John with his blood and his whiskey that's how good he talk yeah, he drink he he whiskey. Uh, he whiskey. Oh no, thank you very much. That was that was that was. We, that we'll was have a beer. Yeah. Oh, the beer will be fine, yeah. Uh, if you had a beer, then yeah. 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 I'll be not able to quit my whiskey. This is good here, isn't it? Good, isn't it? Relaxed, Fergie. This one. That was that was the first thing that was talking about Fergie. Yeah. Fergie was talking to Donny Hassan. Now we were right leaving by something. Right. And some I don't know who did it. It was very funny.